Nancy, the apparent fine-tuning of the universe has become an increasingly interesting topic mm -hmm. for philosophers, theologians, even many scientists. What do you think about the reasoning that goes from the fine-tuning of many fundamental constants to what's called an anthropic principle, which calls um, into effect the observer being able to be in a place where he or she can exist and therefore indicates a, a multi-universe scenario? Wow, that seems like a lot of huge leaps of reasoning. <laughs> I, um, uh, I'm assuming that what's meant is uh, it's highly, Im it's uh, vastly, vastly improbable that if there's only one universe, it would turn out to be life supporting. But it is life supporting, and we're here. And uh, how can you explain the uh, highly improbable fact if there's only one universe? And so a possible explanatory move would be to say that there are vastly many universes, and of course we would end up in the, one of the ones that support life. Is that the yes. um, question that you're asking? Yes. And what do I think about that? <laughs> yeah, let, let, let's start that one again. Yeah. Let's start that one again. Um, that's that's the question. Okay. So let me let's assume that because other people will say that you don't need to repeat it. Okay. Other people will make that okay. point exactly what you're saying. So let me ask you. Uh, let, let me do it. Um, as a Christian theist, Nancy, what do you think of the anthropic argument? I have found it very interesting. Uh, of course, a number of us jumped on the bandwagon to say, "Aha, we've got added evidence for the existence of God." But as, why did you say that? Because um, if you think in terms of, uh, to put it simply, uh, inference to the best explanation as mm -hmm. being our most common form of reasoning, then uh, it seems to cry out for explanation. Why, if it's possible to have this vastly, vastly, vastly huge number of universes, should the one that exists happen to be the one that allows for life? It just seems to cry out for explanation. And of course, for a theist, the simple explanation is, ah, God did it. And I don't, I've never uh, espoused the idea that you could just simply start from the fine tuning and use that all by itself as an argument for the existence of God. But I have argued that if you've already got an understanding of God as creator, you could take that as a little bit of additional evidence to support your uh, theistic claims. Once the multiple universes theses came along, early on you could say, well, they're just making that up as an alternative hypothesis right. so they don't have to think about God. But apparently the science has progressed so that those theories have to be taken seriously. In many different ways. Yes. Many different ways of generating multiple universes. Yes. yes. So now what do you think? Well, uh, I was sorry that the article <laughs> that I put so much work into is now passé. <laughs> But actually, as I've thought about uh, these scenarios, it seems much more um, consistent with my conception of God to think that if it's possible to create more than one universe, then it's likely that God would have done that. Uh, Augustine in the 4th, 5th centuries uh, had a term called the principle of plenitude, which he used for different purposes. But the idea was that uh, if God is truly good, then God would create as many different kinds of reality as God could. And uh, this would seem to be a very fine contemporary illustration of that principle. Some theists in the Christian tradition have taken the anthropic principle to another level by saying not only do we have to be in a universe in which uh, we are observers, but in fact, the universe itself must, must be one that generates life at some time or some place in its history. Do you subscribe to that? The only way the must could come in there, I think, would be by a, a divine decree. And That's the implication. Yeah. But I think, most, I think most of the other people who make that claim are doing it on non-theistic grounds, and I don't understand the reasoning behind that. 
uh, you don't understand the reasoning, how they can get the must yes. into the equation? Yes. Uh, these are people who, who may have theistic ambitions, but they don't use theistic arguments. Okay. Okay. So what, what do you think of that? Well, um, God certainly had the intention all along to have creatures with whom he could relate, but uh, God could just as well have chosen to generate as many universes as possible, knowing that some of them, by accident, would have creatures like us in them. And there's no must there. Well, the must there in your scenario is a must that God created this uh, multiplicity yes. of universes, knowing that in a very few of them life would emerge. So you have a must in yours as well. Yes, but it's at a, uh, a, a different much different level. level. Yes. yes, your must is trying to be consistent, perhaps with yes. uh, with the latest scientific thinking. Yes. And uh, biologists would say that most biologists would say that there's no must about um, creatures with our level of intelligence and relational capacity evolving in this universe. Although perhaps uh, uh, the appearance of life was uh, a foregone conclusion, but certainly not. Um, Nancy, it seems that you're saying is that God in His unfathomable wisdom created a, a multiplicity of universes, an infinite number of universes, knowing that with statistical randomness, a few or a number mm -hmm. would create the intelligent life mm -hmm. that he could relate to. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the must, the, the design must, is built into multiplicities of universes as opposed to one universe. Actually, I wouldn't even want to say that because I think traditionally Christians and other theists have said that God was freely creating and didn't really need, didn't really have to create anything at all, uh, including us. So there was no necessity on God's part. No, I'm not saying there's a necessity, but mm -hmm. what I'm saying is that when God created the opportunity for multiple universes, the motivation was that some must generate life oh, or human life. Okay, so if God has chosen that there be creatures to relate to, then God's yes. uh, choice will come through. But it need not have been on this particular planet and, uh, in fact, the biologists say that uh, even though our planet does support life like us, it need not have had life like us. Sure. That is, if you replay the evolutionary scenario, there's no guarantee that we would have shown up. Right. But again. in your worldview, that in God's multiplicity of universes, there was a guarantee that statistical probabilities would would uh, determine absolutely that some places and sometimes intelligent life would emerge, whether this universe or one of the other universes, number 875 or <laughs> whatever, that it, there would be such life that God would relate to. So your must as a th Christian theist is at a different level than those who would say that this is the universe mm -hmm. in which the must occurs. Yes, I think I agree with that. I certainly <laughs> agree that the must is not on this earth. <laughs> but you do have God with his or her must. Yes.